Well, after the Star Trek, the original series, uh, an animated series, a little follow-up, uh, and then, of course, a film series, um, the emphasis to get back to television was there. Now, uh, interestingly enough, of course, before the films, there was an attempt early on to restore Star Trek to TV screens, but that ended up becoming the motion picture as a result of the Star Wars craze and so on and so forth, and the rest is history. But a return to television was still uh, on the table, and eventually they got there, uh, and this became Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, even though some of the plots and even scripts, for the most part, and set up for uh, Star Trek Phase Two, which became the motion picture, uh, was simply transferred over to Next Generation. So some of that uh, shows up uh, in that first season. And certainly, uh, the characters have kind of just swapped out, where uh, most prominently, uh, Riker, Troy, and Data. Uh, uh, Riker is Decker. Uh, Troy is Ilya. Or uh, Ilya was the name of the bald lady. <laughs> yeah, but she, was, she was already cast. There's footage of them doing test screens and stuff like that um, of, of, the, of the new actors brought in. And uh, she was going to be a regular on that series. And that was kind of the backstory that there had been this romance between these two characters. And they kept to it with uh, Next Generation, even though it's blatantly a carbon copy <laughs> of Decker and Ilya, but it's Riker and Troy. And, but it works, you know, and they got a lot more time to, to uh, work on that. Uh, as for Data, uh, his character was based on, uh, was it Zahn, I believe? Uh, who was, because Leonard Nimoy didn't want to do any more Star Trek until it became a movie, then he was interested. But he didn't want to do the TV series, so they decided they would have to create a new Vulcan character. Uh, but this one would be totally Vulcan and uh, un unfamiliar with humans at all. And so the idea is that he would be uh, a rather innocent take and that he doesn't get jokes and all that stuff, which is top to bottom data as he's introduced here. He doesn't understand... Uh, well, jokes and whatnot and sayings that humans engage in and they have to explain it to him. And that became kind of the gag uh, for Data as they went along. So that's what he was based on. And so that's that's basically the, the jumping off point of their cast. And then uh, the more of the approach was, do you get another Captain Kirk in there? And they decided not to do that. Uh, there was different. Uh, I can't. There was. I think there was a couple of other actors they had in mind for Jean Luc Picard, and they ended up going with Patrick Stewart. Um, but I'm forgetting all of that. Someone in the comments will know, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, and uh, the, the whole approach, certainly uh, his physical appearance, they didn't fit him with a toupee or anything. He said, "No, just go ahead." And the idea is, hey, wouldn't they have a cure for baldness in the future? Well, maybe. Uh, but it's also that they're supposed to be more evolved than us, <laughs> which is difficult to depict. I mean, how do we know? But the attitude being that the aesthetic didn't matter as much to them. But then you get into stories about, you know, the romance and sexuality and attraction and all that. And <laughs> so would there, but then that, that's just Picard. He didn't care. Uh, he doesn't have time to worry about restoring his hair. Um, so, you know, whatevs. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. I suppose they could have just made him an alien that they were naturally bald or something. But uh, they wanted him to be a human, you know. So anyway, uh, there you go. That's the deal. But it's also a different approach. And that uh, I think Roddenberry said he kind of split up the personalities of Kirk and Spock between uh, Picard and Riker. And that uh, Riker is certainly, you know, appearance-wise kind of has more of a of a Kirk, uh, he's uh, you know, certainly a a ladies' man. Uh, all the women are checking him out when he comes on the show, <laughs> and all of that type of stuff. Whereas uh, Picard is bereft of a lot of that, and uh, very uh, strict and by the book type guy, uh, and he's he uses a lot of. The, there are some, and, and at the outset, I'm not a fan of the first two seasons of Next Generation. I think they're very, very bad. Uh, conceptually, they're strong uh, in sci-fi concept and whatnot. But I have far more greater appreciation for it now due to the current state of Star Trek. 
that followed it. Um, uh, so, yes, boy, it, it wasn't so bad now that I'm rewatching. <laughs> Uh, but some of the approaches they did was, was actually pretty smart to not be a, a carbon copy of the original series, even though a lot of the aspects were were there. They went back to the color scheme of uniforms, that sort of thing. Even the updated Enterprise is more closer, just with you know the red just lights on the, the cells and stuff like that, whereas it seemed to be abandoned for the uh, for the movies. Um, and so and a lot of things like that. And then just in this first uh, uh, episode, they go to a planet and it's very much, you know, the, the, the stage set very like they did in the old show. <laughs> but hey, like I always say, it's an alien world. What do you know? How do you know what it's going to look like? <laughs> so, uh, the, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an important episode for the lore of Next Generation because it sets up quite a bit. Uh, first of all, it gives you a tour of the new ship, it shows you uh, the the splitting of they do that with the saucer section with the rest, of, which is something they wanted to do in the original series. They just didn't have the capability of of depicting that to look right, you know. So they just never did it. But it was an idea they had that that was possible, especially since when you go back to the original designs they were coming up with for what the Enterprise is supposed to look like. One ship looked like something out of two thousand one, uh, but another one I was just it was a flying saucer. That was it, kind of a callback to Forbidden Planet, which, <laughs> which is pretty much a Star Trek episode in and of itself. Quite the precursor, um, but uh, so that's that idea was there. Also, the holodeck was there. It actually shows up in the animated series. Uh, but they never got around to it, and so here it is in this one, and they display that, and of course the holodeck plays quite a role throughout. Um, but right off the bat, one of the recurring features of old Star Trek was godlike characters. And there are a few that appear throughout Next Generation, but they decided right off the bat one primary one would be very significant and has become quite a big part of the overall core of Next Generation being the character of Q and his constant battles, so to speak, with Picard. Uh, but I'm more of the opinion that he's an omnipotent force, and a lot of this is he's deliberately being this character for the purposes of choosing Picard to be his guide for whatever it is that Q have interest in humanity. And the people of the Federation, they keep referring to humanity because, well, we're all humans watching this. But then there's Data there. Troy's not human, you know. Uh, well, she's half human, I think. Uh, that, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, and then, of course, uh, Worf's there. <laughs> so, hey, there's more than humans. But you get the idea uh, of what this test is and the idea of a trial, which they nicely round out uh, the entirety of the series at the end and it, it works gee was that the plan all along no but you know clever writers figured it out and uh, here he's presented as this mischievous type villain and uh, that happens quite a bit but over time it was a rather wise I think and clever uh, expansion upon the character that that wasn't necessarily the case um, so th so yeah conceptually uh, everything's good uh, it's yeah, they're trying to fit in there. They had a tough road to hoe. Uh, the beloved cast and everything was all very well established. The movies were still going on at that time. And then this came. So there was a kind of hesitancy to embrace this. And some didn't like it at all. And uh, But there's a lot of cheesiness about it. Uh, the, the music. <laughs> some of it's not bad. And compared to others and later, there's too much emphasis on the the. the what then was considered groundbreaking uh, keyboard effects and whatnot um, uh, is just overused and a little too silly. Um, but so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, there's worse episodes. <laughs> uh, this one's not too terribly bad. Uh, and, uh, and it's very basic and simple. The overall thing is introducing this Q character who is putting them on notice that they're being watched by this and tested uh, as to what happens in this uh, particular mission where they go to the far point uh, planet and uh, oh no there's something going on some giant ship comes up and attacks 
uh, what's going on? What what's the deal? Turns out uh, the power source of this society is some trapped alien entity that <laughs> they've used for their own ends, and uh, its mate has shown up to rescue it, and uh, Picard ends up siding with the uh, strange alien entities, which turn out to be some sort of half flying saucer, half jellyfish, and uh, they get together. Uh, blue and pink, which uh, suggests binary. Well, you know, you all, you know, it was their time. You know, they didn't understand. Uh, but anyway, so they, they get together, and uh, they don't get it on in front of everybody on the view screen, but uh, I can imagine that probably happened somewhere else. They wanted some privacy. So anyway, there you go. And even as Q is kind of edging them on to just go ahead and destroy everything. <laughs> but they did. And I think that's meaning that Card passed the test um, in there, um, and then a lecture on the guy who should have known better, uh, but didn't. And so you wrap it up like that, and uh, they've established certain aspects of the personalities uh, and all of that. You get a nice little scene with DeForest Kelly playing an old uh, Doctor McCoy, and uh, that's it for Doctor McCoy. That's the last time you'll see him in a Star Trek TV show. I mean, there was the movie still going on, but that's that's the goodbye to uh, Dr. McCoy. Um, and, uh, so, and the other cast are fleshed out there. And, um, you know, for what it is, uh, it's not too bad there. Like I said, there's other episodes <laughs> and things, but uh, have far more fondness for it. Uh, it, it, it. I guess it say it aged well and all of that. Is it on par? with uh, the cage or uh, where no man has gone before? No. <laughs> it's not. Um, those were far more exciting and uh, certainly in the cage, uh, far more interesting. Uh, so what are you going to do? But you got to start somewhere and that's kind of what they started with it and uh, grew into their own and became a, an impressive uh, sci-fi series and a, and a respected and beloved part of for Star Trek, and for a lot of people, younger people, this was Star Trek. Too. This is their experience with it. Um, but uh, uh, it, well, it, it kept, kept unto itself. Forget even forget about the films, and certainly the Picard series, and all that just doesn't count. Uh, left to that, it's pretty good, you know. And that's the only way to look at it. Um, but. Anyway, what are you going to do? <laughs> so there was encounter at Far Point, and the, the real encounter was, of course, with Q, who, for the most part, even though he's just he's a recurring character, he's almost a member of the cast at the you know right off the bat. But it is an interesting thing that yes, godlike characters was, were constantly showing up, and there's a few others, but uh, it was interesting they decided to just the main godlike character. For Star Trek The Next Generation would be Q. So for that, and quite a few other reasons within the episode, uh, it's not something you just ignore. Uh, just Now nah, just jump to season three and start from there. <laughs> um, you know, there's some uh, significant uh, elements for the Next Generation lore uh, that began at the beginning for Star Trek The Next Generation in Encounter at Farpoint. Point. 